Welcome back to the House Dungeons & Dragons game of Beardsguard Barbers, brought to you by the magic potions of our house brand, River Peak Apothecary. Speaking of adventures, light your Svartalheim candle as we return to the eternal waning autumn kingdom of the Night Elves. Last episode, you found yourselves on the edge of the spider nursery, home to thousands of germs, nieces, and nephews, who proceeded to ride you and your persons through the forest. <clears throat> After that adorable nightmare, you arrived at the grove, where twisted trees that appeared to be a place of sacrifice set on a cliff's edge, overlooking the ramshackle village of Egley. It is here you met Varsk, a good friend of germs and resident of the village, his grumpy halfling barbarian protector. So now an even larger party, you set about gathering as many allies as you could so that you can set forth for Salt Steps and the battle that will unfold. Speaking of, you and that rando uh, that just captured uh, several of the mantis creatures and are about to offer it to a spider god for the spoot. 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 And that is where we pick up our story for tonight. Shall we? Shall. Spoot. Oh, we Spoot. shall. Spoot. 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 Oh, we Spoot. shall. Spoot. You've just, just gathered them. You, you have one that is bound up, one that is uh, transformed into a smaller spider, and another that is being uh, very well behaved. Yes, that is Gartholomew. Yes. Um, am, I still, am I still hugging that one? <laughs> yeah, uh, that, one, that one's been hogtied a little yeah. bit, too. Um, so you, you are in tow with these creatures. Uh, where, where are you heading for this spoot? Germ, where's the spoot? Uh, I believe the grove might be the best location for making offerings to the spider gods. You should always take it to the sacrificing lands. Yes. We <laughs> could draw them out, then make our proposal, and then we will spring the spoot on them. It is a surprise spoot. Not to us. We know about the spoot. The spoot. They do not. <laughs> and oh. then we will call the spoot to order, offer them snacks, and make our proposal. All right. Tell you. On the way there, I'd like to take the jug of potions or water or mayo and start making condiments <laughs> for the spiders. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead and make an arcana check. To utilize this Oof. wonderful magical item that you're... Quill. Well, uh, you, your grand plan to offer up a variety of dipping sauces and marinades for uh, these creatures, you don't quite seem to, to get more than one type of substance. Um, it's not something that you can switch back and forth between. Okay. You, gotta, you pick one, and that's what you're going to get until it runs out of it's just, that amount. It's just Worcestershire. <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> I didn't want sauce. anything close to this. <laughs> so what? what is the, the first thing that you go to? I mean, I've, I was very interested in mayo last okay. session, so I probably should stick with the mayo. All right. And then I'll just figure out a way to use all of our combined travel <laughs> seasonings to make different like I mean, chipotle mayo let's make a, <laughs> a mayo cheddar there's, there's definitely enough uh like just various uh like natural herbs and and things that you can find along the way you've heard of hidden valley ranch now what about spider valley ranch there we go <laughs> germ brings some shaved truffles to it Ooh, Ooh, that's there, right. we have a nice truffle wow. ale yeah, dude. there's there's yeah. like a truffle growing on him. He's like, <laughs> do spiders even have a sense of taste? Uh, I do when I am a spider, but I have not been other spiders. I have just been me as a spider and I have taste. I guess that's true. I don't know how I taste as a spider. 
We, we can test you that don't, theory. Don't, yeah, don't eat yourself. Do you know the Do you know the five mother sauces? <laughs> five mother sauces with mayo. <laughs> can that jug make a Can that jug make a nice? Uh, uh, oh, a, a, I can't believe I just forgot it. Mustard, a nice hollandaise. Yeah, you could make a dijonaise if you got it. Bechamel. <laughs> Get some mustard, make a dijonaise. It's a a crude but serviceable. Uh, Dipping condiment. <laughs> and a lot of it. Uh, <laughs> like, it's too much. I'm pretty sure it makes like five gallons of mayo. It's yeah, I'll you look at <laughs> double check the, the stat on it, but it, it's an aggressive amount of <laughs> mayo. This is like a Costco serving. I mean these things are relatively large, so could need more than just a, a little dip. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Somebody like I don't like mayonnaise. <laughs> you know, you'll find out. So you head to the Grove. Uh, two gallons. Two gallons. <laughs> you have two gallons <laughs> of of this truffle Spartelheim mayo. Sure enough, we're gonna get there, and they're gonna prefer Miracle Whip. Gosh uh-huh. darn it! <laughs> Who prefers Miracle Whip? Nobody should prefer Miracle Kill Whip. Them. It's salad dressing. Uh, so once we get to the grove, how do we make sure that the spiders come out? How do we call them? You shackle it to the tree, and then we the, the just... offering to the tree, right? And then you just wait for them to come out. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. I mean, we could get the priest out here. They might know better. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Let's get the priest. You make your quick pass by the the Moonwed Temple. Uh, who, who goes up to? I will. The, yeah. All right. I'm making mayo. <laughs> Amrix is stride on up. Because <coughs> I've been uh, there before. I mean, we're. I mean, we're BFFs you're, you're old now. pals now. Yeah. So I ask him. Uh, hey, uh, we're gonna go. Uh, Go to this, uh, Smoot. Uh, would you like to come, please? You were here not half an hour ago and already have accomplished your goal in acquiring a tribute. Yeah, we got three snackies and a lot of mayo. Impressive. Yes, Jim's <clears throat> friends are very efficient. Well, then we should not waste the time. Lead the way. To the Grove! Anybody up for like a pint of lock? Just... <laughs> uh, his... Despite how kind of like old and wise and he looks, he has a, a very long and like smooth gait. Almost like uh, like a speed runner. <laughs> Just... As the cloak swishes behind him, Just walking through a mall. Yeah, oh, I was gonna yeah. say, like you could see him in the <laughs> mall. Walking. He's got his New Balances on. Mm-hmm. Arsk is gonna get lost way in the back. <laughs> <laughs> is that an anti hands? <laughs> I mean, even when he's moving slow, Arsk is <laughs> in the back. <laughs> he's he's a good bit. He's like four Varsks tall. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's you don't even stand a chance. No. That's not even. <clears throat> Right to the spoot. <laughs> you take off behind him, you make your way to the grove, begin to affix and strap these creatures to the offering tree. Germ is very Germ has yet to he's still standing off to the side with Gotholomew. Okay. Like just kinda watching this whole thing. Waiting. <clears throat> Varsk. A word. Yes, yes, Germ. Is, is this right? Is, like, is what right? And he points at Germ. Points at Gotholomew. He's like, I have. Yeah, Germ like talks low so he can't hear. <laughs> you know, he's like, I have charmed this monster, and I've named it. That was maybe a mistake. That's a mistake right there. <laughs> yes, I should not have named it. But now I feel bad about offering it to the spiders. Uh, this uh, this creature is, uh, you know, kills people. So perhaps uh, not having a 
monster in your toe is not a bad idea. Um, but we have killed people, Varsk. We also <laughs> might be monsters. <laughs> Barrick is going to think back fondly. Tr- Trim thinks long and hard about this. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> I wonder if he's ever going to make an appearance again. And monsters must monsters. do monstrous things. Yes. Jerm thinks Jerm understands. <laughs> Thank you, Varsk. You have solved this deep, ethical, and perhaps existential quandary that I have faced. I'm, I'm glad I could be of service. Yes. All right, Gotholomew. Let's go. <laughs> and Jerm just entirely is like, all right, come on. Climbs right up onto the tree, hugs it. Yeah. <laughs> Germ shaves some truffles just in a little pile right on top of its head. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just... Yeah. I'd like to put the baby spire in like a tub of mayo and just like set it on the tree. <laughs> it's gonna die. Well, <laughs> don't you on the mayo? Don't you think yeah. that it's you like should marinating. let the spell end and let it become large? No, because then it'll attack us. Well, that's why we shackle it to the tree. So I just wrap the mayo-soaked <laughs> tiny spider to the tree. <laughs> it's like based. Yeah. It's it'll grow larger than it'll grow larger in their stomach. Like it's like, oh, it's a snack, but then a full meal. It's oddly filling. Yeah. It's like lemon spread. Yeah. Well, they do one thing of damage to it, and it'll pop back up. Oh, well, so. you know, the stomach acid will do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stomach acid. Mm. All right, so here. we've tied it to the tree. <laughs> we've do, tied the things to the tree. Do we have to call anything like "wooba wooba wooba"? That's why we have the priest. Spoon. Well, they don't know what "spoot" means. <laughs> yes, let's they, call. The spi- uh, yeah, the spiders don't know what a "spoot" means. The uh, Belianthra. Belianthra. Is that who we're calling? Yeah, Belianthra and Gorthalor. Right. Gorthalar. Yeah. Gorthalar is the bastard spider. You yeah, wish to call him dead. both? Yes. Because I think Belianthra, she is a very nice lady spider and will help, but mm. I think we could appeal to Gorthalar's ego of wanting to eat things that are larger than himself. You know, what is larger than the gaw? And correct me if I am wrong here on my lore and history, <clears throat> but is not he in a way spawned from the gaw? What is greater than destroying that which created you? Wow, that's really some deep stuff. Man. Yes, Germ in the University at Leron once met a man named Freud. He told him all about this. <laughs> I mean, have you ever had a deep tissue massage? <laughs> Those are pretty great. Yes, Gorthaler, we can appeal to his ego of wanting to destroy that which created him. Unless his id takes over and decides to whack on us. <laughs> yeah, but he is a... Hopefully... Dumb ego driven spider god. <laughs> Wasn't it Kafka that turned into a giant spider or something? Things are getting too existential for Barrick. <laughs> He's just you standing speak there. Speak of strange people and <clears throat> beliefs. I, I myself <laughs> am strange. Suppose that people are strange. When you're a stranger. <laughs> people are strange. There's song number one, I think. Now that the offering is bound, we shall call them forth and raise a petition. Uh, Please stand around the edges of the grove, but do not be near the offerings for safety reasons. So you, you all can spread out around this uh, sacrificial grove. Uh, if if everyone would place a hand upon the nearest thread of web, please. Oh, thank you. Uh, he's going to like swoop down and bring his hands up. You see, there's uh, sparks start to fly out, green and pink and purple. Uh, almost like little flares and fireworks uh, erupting in the sky above. Now, pluck the web! Strum it! Call them forth from the depths of the woods! Just no stairway to heaven. 
Varshk will just start chanting Spoot. Within moments, you feel the ground tremble. Everybody make a perception check roll. Oh, okay. Twenty-two! Oh. Okay. Uh, Oh, no. One. Oh. <laughs> you got some mayo in your eye. <laughs> Six. Six. Fourteen. Eleven. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, Barrick. The rest of you, you still feel the trembling of... of everything around you, but you have no idea from which direction it comes. It feels like it's being just a wave from everywhere. Barrett, you notice that there are two distinctly different patterns overlapped. Okay. Do I know from what direction they're coming from? The heavier pattern seems to be coming from the southwest. Okay. The other uh, is coming just east of where you were, almost like the the direction that you came into town. So one is coming from, like, behind us. Yeah, there's one coming up this way, and there's another one coming this way. Okay. Uh... The one coming up from the south is is a heavy and aggressive... Uh, Merrick is not really vibing with this. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna, like, stand <clears throat> against the tree, kinda. And the rest of you see uh, a massive arm swipe several trees out of the way and looming behind them, reaching up into the sky above you, is this hideous form of what looks like these mantis creatures, but more legs, towering above 20 feet, 25 feet tall. And his mouth opens up and just says, What is it? Oh, I don't What is the meaning of this? Uh, is that, um... Uh, Jerm? 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 Hello, Gorthaler. It is Jerm. How have you been? I can see time has not, uh, tempered your fearsomeness. We have a proposal for you. We were hoping Belianthro would get here too. Uh, we have called this Spider Moot. A spoot, if you will. As you may be aware, there are some things going on with the with the gaw out on the salt steps. Things are not great. I am aware. We will propose to you. We know you like destroying and eating and devouring and killing and being fearsome and murdering. Let me level with you. I've heard you're good at it. Even they have heard. Germ knows you. We go way back. One of the best. Yeah, that's what I've say. heard. I've heard that. And I didn't tell them about this. They heard this through the web vine. Many people talk of how wonderfully scary you are. There, there are actually songs sung. There are songs sung about your <clears throat> scariness. And also slightly inappropriate limericks. <laughs> not appropriate. These do not concern me. Ah, yes. Back to the devour destroying things which you deem uh, greater than yourself. We are amassing a band to bring the fight to the creatures of the Gaul in the Salt Steps. And we want to bring you along, to invite you, to show that you are 
the greatest spider god. And not only that... I do not need you to show my strength. Oh, then we'll see you there. Fantastic. You already know we'll meet you there. Uh, that's great. You we will... speak for Gorthaler. You just said you would be there. You dare! Have you ever had mayo before? <laughs> <laughs> we got some crunchy crispies for you. <clears throat> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Make either a persuasion or a deception. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! To, you're bad at to both. see to see how well you can distract him from. I am going to do. It doesn't matter. Plus zero. <laughs> it's uh. What is it? Big bucks no whammy. Big bucks no whammy. <laughs> deception and what was the other one? Hey. Or, or persuasion. Yeah, it's plus zero either way. So, um, <clears throat> 15. Not bad. I know. 13. What is this you speak of? It's male. It's glorious. And I caught you a treat. And it, I take the little, um, the spider that had been like marinating in the mayo. I'm like, it will turn big once you chomp on it. Or but you, you can totally handle it. I have no problem. I have full like, faith. And then I'll be like, see if you like it. As he leans his head over towards you, uh, you can smell just the rot and decay from inside it. The breath is hot, <laughs> dry, and just acrid. A long tongue reaches oh. out, almost prehensile, and scoops the spider in the mayo and curls back into its mouth. You see him rear back the two side claws. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Interesting. I've been around for a while. It's not often someone gives me something new. Your fates are safe for the moment. Woohoo! Good job, Z. Thank you for saving Germ's life yet again. Uh, I I rolled. I took it upon myself to roll a uh, Constitution to see how well, because Merrick doesn't like spiders. Uh, and I rolled in that one. So he is, he's just kind of sitting there, um, disassociating. <laughs> the lower extremities are getting a little damp and warm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I've done pissed myself. <laughs> Get out. Keep it together. Go away. <laughs> as as he stands there with his form like lowered down, hunched in between all of you. You feel the ground trembling a little bit more, but more of a relaxed cadence, something just approaching. You see the Similar form to Gorthaler, coming up through the path from where the nurseries were. Belianthra, you can only assume. Hard to distinguish between the two, physically. But you see, you hear her. Just, what is the meaning of this? You summon Gorthaler, and she's going to look directly at Germ and Varsk and the High Cleric. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, we summon but Germ before he's, he's Germ's down, like, you know, bowing, speak for, speaking from that position. We summon both of you. 
for this spider moot. Yeah. Or smoot, if you will. For brevity's sake. We seek some assistance from the two mighty uh, gods of spiders <clears throat> and goddesses of spiders uh, to help us, uh, well, help our friends with their, uh, their task. In what way? Well, uh, we, we... how do we help? in any way that you wish to help uh, is what I would uh, assume. Uh, you see, we uh, we seek to uh, close the gaw. So I step up because uh, I'm with the I'm with the priest because you know we're buddies, and I step up and then bow deeply and say, you know, goddess of spiders, we you know are here to ask that you you know fight alongside us and. Show truly, show us truly how magnificent you are, and to help us defeat the evil monstrosities that threaten your realm. You speak of the gaw. Yes, there are currently a bunch of holes in the gaw, and there's a bunch of people that want to have the gaw take over where we are today. Mm. We're trying to stop that because we like living here. As do I. It's been fruitful for me. I've been here for the better part of a thousand years now. I am the daughter of the first spider that crawled out through the tear in the gall. The dangers are greater now. The sacrifices are plenty. But I do get tired. Arthur puffs his chest up. I am the one who can take over, relinquish control, and submit to me. Well, let's not let's not fight it out here. Let's solve one problem at a time. If you both fight with us in the against the god to close it. Uh, perhaps one of you could sh demonstrate who is the strongest between the two of you that way. Yes, because this is a very meager <clears throat> audience. The whole world would want to see you guys fight and see who could do better. And it would be Epic. unquestionable who would the outcome would be. Plus, you get to eat what you kill. Snackies. And mayo. Lots of mayo. <sighs> Mayo is very good. <clears throat> Gorthler will fight. Whether belly or not. I will be there for victory. When? Great question. Within a, a <clears throat> days. The sooner we get there, the better. to grab one of the other offerings, yanks it right off the tree, shoves it down into his mouth, and you hear it like crackling and screaming, and he takes off northward. Oh, oh so we're doing this now. <laughs> yep. Grab the things! <laughs> Pardon me. You heard him? Keep up! He's just... He's just... 
Did we like a purposeful stride. He's not like sprinting. sprinting in any way, but he's just like, all right, yeah, bet. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, before, uh, yeah, uh, while he, um, Gorth Alol takes off, uh, there's still one of, there's still one more offering, right, for mm-hmm. Bellatrix? Be- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not good with names. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> yeah, I can't read that. There's, I don't have my... You don't have your reading specs on? I don't got my reading specs on. There it is. Okay. Right? There's still one there for her? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So then we make an offering to you, Belianthria. Belianthra. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> Nailed it. You are always so good to me, which is why I protect this village and the forest. I accept. (laughs) I will lend my aid to the battles as well. Oh, my wisdom provides clarity against hubris. I do not need to rush if you need to gather your forces or perhaps strategize. <sighs> I can be a part of that. We are open to suggestions. With lots of knee cracking and <laughs> bones popping, uh, Varsk will kneel down and, and thank her. <clears throat> For the good trouble, Aeoli. Is this the mayo? This the fancy mayo. mayo. <laughs> but yes, she's never Jerm had, provided these truffles for the mayo, mayo before, so she has nothing to go off of. <laughs> this is Jerm's fancy mayo. I'd say the first thing was a collaboration. The first thing we need to do, Picus, as uh, probably send a message to Longhall, letting him know that we're on <clears throat> to expect a giant spider. Yeah, yeah we're <laughs> on the Wii with. Uh, Don't kill the spiders. Uh, yeah, with troops in tow. Uh, aren't we? Aren't we also supposed to go collect people from the village too? Yeah, yes. we could, and then we could go to the village gather the troops there um, and then head into battle a rest would have perhaps be nice uh, yeah probably yeah. wouldn't hurt either yeah it's, it's like mid afternoon ish early afternoon still it's, it's on the earlier side of the day but you are welcome to do whatever you like. Germ will go to Beliantra. Beliantra, how do we feel about taking care of the Gorthaler problem while all this is playing out? I.e. stabbing him in the carapace when he is not looking. <laughs> I figure... Germ, the Garrett, what? Stabbing him in the carapace. Spiders, they have a carapace. He wants to kill him. The back. Yes. Oh, okay, <laughs> stab him in the back. Take Thank care you. of this whole Ten business. Minutes. I mean, he's... Level, he's. We both know he is a time bomb. It is only a matter of time before... It's a very short fuse. Yes. I it mean, seems... I don't know. Maybe you have a different relationship. It seems to have been lit and is now burning. It won't take much We can see how things play out in the battlefield. Let's give him the head start. Ah, yes. All right, let's go back, take a quick nap. (laughs) Get up and it's murder time. (laughs) I'm going to send a message to Longhall on the message rack (laughs) and say, um, expect to... Spider gods. And a crystal dragon. <laughs> and a crystal dragon. Or, okay, expect two spider gods arriving at different times. 
tell them about germ. And us. <laughs> and and the crystal thing. dragon. And germ. Germ, wouldn't it be better if we let your presence be a surprise? Ooh. Mm. Germ likes being a surprise, yes. No, don't, don't tell them about germ. Germ would like to be a surprise. You're the best surprise, Germ. The best. Oh, and nobody is more worthy of germ surprises than you, Vars. <laughs> Please give them to somebody else. That's why this <laughs> surprise has been the 271st surprise. Oh, Lord. <clears throat> I and hope it's people. not the last. And he goes in for a hug. Barst high fives his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this person you are sending messages to? Uh, he's kind of the uh, administrator. Makes sense. And Amrix, who are these people that want to keep the gaw open? Uh, they're called Gold Spark. The gold spark. Yes. Hmm. They're okay. bad dudes. Are they some sort of cult? Yeah, yeah. You could call it that. Hmm. Yes. Does it have something to do with the bright thing in the sky? The yes. sun? Yes. They worship the sun. Oh, okay. They are some <laughs> sort of sun cult. Germ is, Germ is from this land. Germ is more familiar with the Sometimes round, sometimes not there, sometimes crescent-shaped thing in the sky. The moon? Yes, that's it. Um, when we get back to town, I would like to... Yeah, I mean, let's. we need to take a rest before we start this. So, we want to rest overnight, head out first thing in the morning. I mean, aren't we supposed to still go around and collect uh, people? Yeah. We're supposed yeah. to, like, raise troops. Give some rousing yeah. speeches. Which in the there's, there's still plenty yeah, of hours in the day that. before, you know, bedtime. Then, yeah, let's go gather the troops. We got a a, a giant spider monster to catch up to. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. Uh, so when we get to the center of town, I'm going to find the approximate center and uh, Beric is going to pull out his Yaller horn okay. and just start wailing into it to try to summon people to the center okay. of town. Uh, give me a performance check. I'll shoot off some like, press digitation. And I'll tell Jerm more about Baboltus and... <laughs> the gold spark. Get him all up to speed. Got it. Ten. I'm gonna help you, so you can roll. Get, get the advantage with. Yeah, it was with Pikas like banging on stuff, <laughs> screaming. He gets uh, in the air. Eleven. <laughs> Ooh. Uh. <clears throat> well, it's like cast guidance on yourself. Good. Oh, I could have cast guidance on myself. Yeah, too late for that, though. Let's see. I don't know if I have anything that helps. <laughs> Which one did you just uh, Could I? Before you roll, I like... was looking for a part of inspiration. No, I was doing the help one, right? Oh, uh, either. Well, could I, help. could I use... Um, Eglin, a... Eglin's not a very large place. Uh, there's only a handful of buildings. They're all relatively close to each other. It wasn't a very high DC. Okay. Uh, you did you did meet it. <laughs> so you would get to add a 1D6 to... Uh, oh. It just takes a little while. Okay. You, you it's, it. you know, it's late afternoon. Some you people are, are in the midst of uh, oh. performing some of their tasks. Okay. Some of them are a little further out of the, the area. But, but they start to gather over the course of an hour or so. Okay. Um, noticing that there's this minotaur... Blowing a yaller horn in the <laughs> middle of their humble. I was gonna say I was about to cast thaumaturgy on myself <laughs> while I was doing it and make it much louder. Um, <clears throat> I can breathe lightning. Barsk is gonna <clears throat> climb up on his uh, his shoulders. Friends, lend me your ears. <laughs> One of them throws a, an ear of corn. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> oh. Who would Gothalamu? 
he got eaten. That uh, was Gotholomew was the one that uh, Gortho snatched oh, okay. Okay. right before heading out. Okay. Yeah. He, it was a been, it was a quick but painful yeah. death. <laughs> if that means it's anything. important for future reference. Okay. Noted. <laughs> Be ready. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you have you have time to, to yeah. you know like discuss things with the, the town folk, um, prepare come up with, with strategies and plans for how you're going to get up there, what you're expecting. Um, so, Amrix, why do these, does this gold spark cult want to keep the gall open? Because they want to take over our realm. Oh, so the gold spark people are from... No. They're from here, okay. But they want, you know, they, you know, promised power and riches for taking over our realm. Ah, yes, and classic enslaving. villainy. Yeah, okay. yeah. I have heard of these gold spark before. They've <laughs> passed through a number of times over the years. Who is this that's speaking? The high cleric. Okay. Oh. Picus. If he wanted to give me that bardic inspiration still, I was going to try to make a rousing William Wallace-esque speech. <laughs> Is it going to do Jer- anything? Uh, I mean, it depends on what I roll, but yeah, it okay. could help. <laughs> so Germ, the uh, and High Priest, um, yeah, we're told that the Gold Spark have plants, people working for them in every village along the Gaul, and we've encountered several and they have met their demise. Truly a formidable group, then. Yes, we're pretty badass. Um, I'd like to ask the High Cleric if he knows who Bolviltis is. I do not recognize the name, but if it is something from beyond, then Beliantra may know of it. All right. And I'll go. I'll do talk to her while you guys are rousing the troops. <clears throat> talk to the giant spire she's, lady. She's still hanging in the grove. Oh. Just, just getting every last spot of mayo that <laughs> could have been anywhere. Like just diligently <laughs> moving around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll go back and talk to her. <clears throat> sure. If anybody wants to come with me. Uh, he's still up on my shoulders. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Germ will go with Zaf. Okay. Hmm? Germ will go with Zaf. Okay. Cool. Uh, as the, tr- the people that are coming in gather around us in the square after hearing the Yaller horn, I'm going to announce to everybody... Now, you may not know me, but you do know me. Hey, bars. <laughs> we have a battle on our, on our hands that will either save this planet, this world, or end in its complete and utter destruction. You see a couple of faces and you're like, <clears throat> okay, you're losing them. Now, the only way to win is to fight. And the only way to, the best way to win is numbers. One day, death will find you, whether it be today, tomorrow, or a hundred years from now. So you have to look at yourself, and you have to decide... Do you want to greet death head on on the battlefield? Or do you want to stay in your cozy houses? This isn't. Waiting like a coward. I'd much rather wait in my cozy house. (laughs) (laughs) 
I say we go and we fight. And we prove to these monsters that ye don't fuck with us. Uh, I'll take that part of consideration if you want to give it to me. Absolutely. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. Absolutely. Varska is going to whisper in his ear. I really like my bed. I really, really like my bed, though. <laughs> uh, and so I'm just rolling this straight, right? Uh, this would be... Um, I think go ahead and do either... Oh, this would be persuasion. Okay, persuasion. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's much better. You're persuasion. You're, you're hyping people up, trying to convince them... Of what's I'm too tired. I can't. What's needing to do? Twenty, <laughs> and then plus your bardic inspiration should be like a deep. Do I get? Are you giving me the bardic inspiration? I don't think you need it. Uh, it's, that's that. a, it's a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty is enough. Um, you see, like you you were losing a little bit at the at the death is going to come for you one day, and, and you kind of like house. came back around. <laughs> you brought it up, and and some of them are just like I don't know, like the bed is comfortable. But also, like, numbers, yes, and danger is bad, and I don't like danger, so if there's more of us than there is of the danger, like, yeah, all right, yeah, let's do this, let's go, yeah! Also, if it helps, we have two spider gods and a giant dragon on our side. And Varsk. I'll be there. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and Germ. Oh. <laughs> 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 One person. It's what he's, he's like the weird guy in town just loves hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a germ t-shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he like God, pins mushrooms to yeah. his vest to be like you. Germ's like really weird germ about mine. <laughs> yeah. Like, got a, he's got one of those uh, mylar balloons that's shaped like germ's head. Yeah. He's, he's, just, he's, a, he's a really like scrawny gangly teen. Yeah. Germ's pissed because he hasn't gotten a scent from this merch. <laughs> you could say he's, he's a, a foam hand. germaphobe. Germ, number one. <laughs> Ger- germaphobe. Sh- the Jesus. Germans. <laughs> <laughs> Yavul. Uh, but first, we rest and we prepare, and then uh, tomorrow, when when the day breaks. At dawn, we break our fast. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so Zaith and Germ, you enter the grove. You see Belianthra still licking for every last little scrap of the mayo. Uh, <laughs> she. Yeah does not notice you at all. <laughs> she is zoned in. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, hi. Um, <sighs> sorry to disturb you again so soon. <sighs> but I, you, I was very sneaky. Surprisingly not. I'm just, I'm just tall. Hmm. For me. Distracted by the mayo. Um, <laughs> Absolutely lost in the sauce. <laughs> um, I'll ask her, so I heard you say that you are about a thousand years old? I'm much older than that, but I have been here for the better part of a thousand years. And Nearly. So would you... I'm going to sit down and start pulling out all of my like books and notes and everything... And it kind of looks like um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia when I pull it all out with like strings and points and everything. I just kind of lay it out and I'm like, so, gold sparks are a cult that is under the orders of Bull Giltus? Bull Biltus. Bull Biltus. Hmm. And I was wondering if you knew who that was or Cole Giltus, which I think is their daddy. Um, Those names are familiar. I do not know them myself, but my mother spoke of that... Hmm, what is the word? Family. Are they also spiders? No. 
we take many forms. This is the one I have chosen. Or was chosen for me. I'm not sure it's been so long. But you have been holding out on Germ. You know damn well Germ changes forms. And all this time, you can too? I haven't really given it a go. Hmm. We'll work on it. After this business with the gauze done, we'll, we'll hang out and work on it. <laughs> uh, what I can remember of the stories that my mother told me is that they are tyrannical and purely chaotic. Much like Gorthaler, they seek to enslave and destroy burning and consuming everything that they can. Is um, Gorthaler as old as you are? Would he know who these people are? No, he is young. Foolhardy. But he also came from the Ga. We are descendant of the beings that live beyond. Would you want to go back to the like through the Ga and go back to your ancestral home? I rather like it here. Okay, I was just curious. Is your mother still with us? <clears throat> No, she has been gone for some time now. My condolences. Thank you. Um, do you have any idea of how to defeat one such as them or push them back through? My understanding of the tear is that it is a doorway, a portal that things can enter and exit through. The ways to do so are tricky, but not impossible. Do you know how to close the door? Because we were thinking, and then I'll go into the spiel that, um, oh, what's his name? Mm, giant. Bob. Bob had about the minion spell and then using the different things and how that would maybe work, but maybe we can just close it and make it more of like a, a knock spell, but reverse it. So instead of opening the door, it closes the door. The tear itself fluctuates with energy, pushed and pulled in particular ways. It is how they would manage in the early days and some until now as well to let some of the more necrotic energies through shaping the seasons. So if we shut it completely, there's no more seasons? We would lose the control of it. Could be an interesting experiment. Hmm. Let uh, nature just take its course. Instead of meddling. <clears throat> yes. Or only meddle when necessary. A little meddling as a treat. Well, to maintain balance. Always. So this is just my question is Meg. Um hmm. so uh I know all the realms are like are they eternally like always autumn, always winter? They don't have like seasons and that's or do they fluctuate still? They they fluctuate, but some more than others. Okay. And okay. Hmm. I was wondering if we were like no more control and then suddenly Jotunheim is like, springtime, all the time. Or like, here's summer, and then flash floods. <laughs> oh, John okay. love flash floods. <laughs> right. um, uh, uh, back of Zayf. Mm -hmm. um, I would like 
So you said you can shapeshift. Do you know any other sorts of magic? Because I'll be like, this is how my magic works. And then I'll show, and show her my rune magic. Sure. And then be like, do you do something similar? Or is it more... If you want to share, that is. Uh, what what do you do to showcase? What, what kind of rune magic do you present? Um, I will... Uh, I'll cast, um, uh, I should know Misty Step. And I'll do that, but then I'll pump, uh, my speed rune in it. Mm -hmm. Um, no, my wind rune that basically lets me, um, go farther. Okay. So I do that, because that should be a level one spell in my head. Fascinating. Uh, she reaches like one of the, the central legs out from the side mm -hmm. uh, points it up towards the sky she goes, cover your ears and a bolt of lightning shoots out just <laughs> crackles through the sky That's yes. terrifyingly awesome. <clears throat> Some of what I do <laughs> took me a long time to learn it, though. We are eternally grateful that you are coming with us. Eternity is a long time. <laughs> I'm getting slightly creeped out, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, Weirdo. Germ, do you have any questions you want to ask? I mean, you know her pretty well. Ah, uh, yes, we go way back. She is Germ's oldest spider friend. You know, before Varsk, he was just coming here to visit Meliantra, but now he visits Meliantra, Varsk, his nieces and nephews. Oh, I'm just delighted to uh, spend time with my friends. Some of the niece and nephew spiders start to come up by the grove and climb up on top of germ. You know, spider hat. Yeah. I uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate your insights. If I have any more questions, I might welcome to ask you on our way or is that okay too? I will remain here at the grove until you are ready to depart. Okay. I would believe we're leaving tomorrow morning early. Very well. If you have any other questions, do come by. And then, as a parting gift, I'll give her some more mayo. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, we cut back to the, the square the central Eglin uh, as, as some people have now like brought some drinks out and they're uh, they've got some sticks and they're drawing like big maps mm -hmm. in the dirt <laughs> it's like okay here this rock is you uh, we'll put you here and then if this is the this is the tear this is the ruins uh, where can we where can we like set everything up and they start like everybody's kind of like pitching different ideas and they're drawing lines it's like having uh, a bunch of amateur maddens <laughs> you go over here and like bam this thing and it's go, go across oh. uh i'm barrick is gonna try to find like a like small gravel <laughs> and like pick up a handful and go over to where and just like kind of sprinkle it over the top and be like everything that is this small rock that is a monster that we have to fight Berenik was just like, oh man, that's that's really a lot. You really, you saw that many out there? I at least I mean it just I bet you I can beat you by ten. You're on. Bruce can put us and shake it. Loser uh, buys a uh, flag and a logger. Two flag and a logger. 
loser. All right, so if I lose, I'll I'll do that. But if you lose, I beat you. You have to let the Cataplepus smother you. Ah. <laughs> Deal. Perfect. <laughs> couple of the other people in town are just like, whoa. I'm going to go, deal! And then I'm going to look at Varsk and be like, what is that? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm assuming Varsk knows what this is. Bar yeah, Varsk, <laughs> you absolutely know what the Cataplepis are. Uh, there's like a small, I wouldn't call it a stable, but it's more like a, like a pen um, on the north side of the uh, house collective. You can easily like walk around and show him, and what you, what you see is essentially a small group of catablepus. These are very large, like hyena feline things. They have like elongated necks, uh, crazy fangs. They drool a lot. Like they are just constant slobber. Um, the the amount of like just waste that they're standing around in is unsatisfactory. I mean, I've had a red horror explode on me. They, I've had... They are currently like pigs in a muck. They are rolling in it and uh, uh, yeah. Ger Germ uh, would like <laughs> to know if the Cataplopis is a beast. Uh, I believe technically it is it is a beast. And Germ does a, not know the turn. What would be their, uh, for lack of a better phrase, their challenge rating? Germ learned about it. Is it an abstract measurement system to measure the strength of beasts? Go, you know what? Go ahead. You've been in. You've been here in Eglin for a bit. Make a nature check. Uh, you know that if you were to assign it some kind of score, um, it's not nothing. You could, you could probably handle one on your own. Can Germ become one? You haven't tried yet. Hmm. Okay. Barrick, uh, Point of order. Germ has agreed to come with you, but we have not agreed to the terms of Germ's payment. If Germ survives and you lose to Bernick, and Germ can turn into a cata... Cataplepis. Cataplepis. Germ gets to be the Cataplepis that smothers you. You're on. Fantastic. <laughs> I will try in the morning. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, if that's the case, then let's get to bed. We have a long day tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. <laughs> it's Macbeth. <Okay. laughs> Who? Just kidding. So as you as you figure out your your plans for everything, the evening winds down. You have some crude stew. It, it's okay. It's kind of bland. Literally just meat and potatoes that have been simmered down. Not a lot of seasoning, but it'll do. Germ offers truffle to everybody. Truffle, truffle, truffle. Is there any mayo left? I mean, there were two gallons of it. You gave it to her. I didn't give all of it to him. I'm assuming it'll, it, it's like I can stop her as long it just keeps going until two gallons are gone and then you pick a new thing. Mm -hmm. So I'll open it up yeah, and be like, <clears throat> there's, there's, yeah. All right, well, then for the bread. So, so many uses per day kind of thing. To bed. <laughs> all right. So you all rest in what will most likely be the last bed that you sleep in before heading across the wastes of the salt flats. You'll get a long rest. The morning 
comes with soft breezes, warm, dry winds. The sun feels hidden behind the the constant haze in the sky. Everybody is prepared. You're greeted by the town folk who are going to come with you. Beliantra is standing at the north edge of Eglin. And you can depart. Let's do it. All right. As soon as you leave the tree lines north of the town, you can see the salt flats stretching out in front of you, peppered with dozens upon dozens of various creatures from beyond the Gaw. And in the very, very distance, you can see just just that hint of the tear. Like a tiny little flame on the horizon. We can already see the creatures. <clears throat> How far away are they? Everywhere. Um, like the the closest ones to you are are this is as as you're stepping beyond those last few trees and, and bushes. Um, maybe 150 feet until you actually get to any of them. Can. Uh... Can any of you fly? Maybe we could fly over them. Did anybody? No? Nope. Um, I'm trying to decide how chaotic I want to be. <laughs> Can we get on the back of Billy Anthra? All of oh, us? So, some of you definitely can. She's pretty big. Uh, do we see... Uh, Gore. Gorandor, is that his name? The giant, the other one. Oh, Gorthaler? Gorthaler. Um, make a perception check. Um, that's a dirty 20. 18. <clears throat> Off to the east a little bit, uh, you do see just a massive dust cloud, and then every once in a while you see like a couple of arms, and then <laughs> back into the dust. And... <laughs> uh, I am going to look at the party that we've been traveling with this whole time, the new faces, and I'm going to pull out the Yaller horn again. And I'm going to look at everybody and I'm going to go, well, no time like the present. <laughs> and I am going to cast Thaumaturgy on the Allerhorn and then just give it everything I've got. <laughs> and charge. <laughs> you got it. It's sounding the horn, just this... <laughs> Uh, Barrick charges into uh, the salt flats. There are, I'd say, with, within the first group of creatures that you encounter are these almost ghastly-looking humanoid shapes with, you, from a distance, looks like they have these like shrouds draped over them. As mm. you get closer, you realize it's just flesh. Ooh. Um, there's there's a couple of them two or three about your height and then another three that are closer to Zayt's height okay uh, one of them like lashes out and just goes <laughs> and attempts to strike you as you run up at it okay this is not bad idea uh, you know what? Sometimes bad ideas are good ideas. Um, as I'm running in, mm -hmm. I'm going to bonus action 
pop my shield of faith on myself, giving myself a plus two boost to my armor class, making my AC 22. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a 19 to hit anyways. Uh, so the, the slash comes at you as you're running by, and you're going to just whoo, duck it. I hope people followed me. I mean, yeah, Mars, yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, are we just... Find out. Uh, well, I'm following you, and I'm... Remember, are we just running through them, or are we fighting? I mean, fight if they attack. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about you, Beric. <laughs> what did you, you say? That's what I love about you. <laughs> um, but armor class is like 10. Well, I mean, you stay back. You're a caster. <laughs> we know how this works. Um, <coughs> do you want to be riding in on me? And then you can jump off separate. Varsk Vars will ride in All right. on him. You were like <laughs> holding my horns. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm following behind Beric. I pull out my flamey sword and ignite it. Hell yeah. With my, uh, sh I got shield in one arm, one hand, and... <laughs> Just charging in, flamey sword in the neck, in the Is other one. Billy Anthra with us too. Yeah, I'm gonna run back to her and be like, "Can I get on your back, and I'll give you two gallons of mayo?" She gives, she scoops you right up and and sets you like just just behind her head, like okay. off to one of the shoulders. Germ's already up there. He already walked Germ's up. on the other shoulder. I was like, "Oh, hi, he, Germ." Germ's just like standing there, basically like stuck to it, you know, because he has his, just, you know. Slippers Slightly. of spider climbing. <laughs> oh, they're really. Slightly, he's used his slippers of spider climb to climb a spider. That's about as. And this is like <laughs> meta. full meta as you get. Wow. Hey, Zay, I used my shoes of spider climbing to climb a spider. Ooh, fancy. I think this is irony. <laughs> I, can, I can do that too. Ooh. Yeah. I'm not casting. I'm going to jump up and grab a leg and swing around it and then yeah. jump up on top of. Well, as well. You got it. All right. So we got you three on Beliantha. You're riding on um, Beric <laughs> and Amric's shield and flame sword, uh, charging into the salt flats. Uh, and, and all of you, you're, you're passing through this section where, yeah, you see you see several of these. Uh, Flesh draped oh. creatures <clears throat> just screaming out, and they've noticed you. <clears throat> you, I, you don't say. <laughs> so, um, the, the way that we're going to run this is we're, we're going to grab initiative, and this is going to be just getting through an area. Okay. So, you don't necessarily have to be like stopped in combat for anything. 10. 24. Oh. 18. <laughs> so you're jumping off me. Oh, yeah, no, I, uh, first. 18. <clears throat> can first can I do, like, a sudden stop? Like, <laughs> <laughs> the old Wolverine-style fastball special. 100%. <laughs> 18, 10. 24. 24. Oh, yeah. No, Marsh is fast. We're 18. 16. 16. Oh, what am I 15. 15. Varsk and Beric about to become best friends. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Suck it, germ. <laughs> as, you're, as you're charging through, you, you're uh, traveling through a section where there's at least half a dozen of these things mm -hmm. that are all just, just clamoring for you as you uh, try to get through. So Varsk, uh, uh, as, as you are uh, nearly swiped off the back of Beric by one of them, you're up first, so what do you do? Varsk is uh, is gonna rage, and he is leaping off, like literally on this thing's face, and just <laughs> going to town, uh, all ham on uh, this thing's face, and just axe and claws, and you got it. He rages. He'll go uh, form of the uh, form of the beast claws. So he's going yes. to literally all of a sudden. Varsk doesn't literally look like Varsk anymore. Instead of uh, instead of this little halfling, you see something that looks more like. Uh, a Wolverine, uh, yes, <laughs> like uh, with still, halfling faith features. Yeah, it's still still like Varsk size, mm -hmm. but the hands and fingers elongate into these massive claws. 
Um, uh, that's a uh, 15. 15 hits. I have a... Uh, it's... Uh, man, I can't do math anymore either. It's uh, 22. Uh, 17. And a... Uh, gosh darn it. 27. You have four attacks returns. Yeah, I have uh, <laughs> all of this. Yeah, that's yeah all I, I do. That's yeah, all I, I need do. to know, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hit with all of them, basically. All of those hit. They're all magical. Uh, there's going to be... So there's... So it's two eights, and then a, another eight, and another and a nine. 33. Dear God. Yeah. 33 so, damage to the face. 33. So, Barrick, you don't see this. You feel Varsk jump off your back and just scream. <laughs> the rest of you see Varsk arms just, like, become claws as he just fairly scratches this thing into shreds. Um, it's done <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna lie that was low damage for him <laughs> yeah these these are outlier things they're, mm -hmm. they're kind of shambling around and looking to get stuff um so yeah not super beefy <laughs> and yeah no armor they're literally just <laughs> skeletons with skin floating off of them like ropes. Yeah. Lots of teeth. <laughs> skin robes. Mm-hmm. Which brings us uh, to both Picus and uh, Beric. I believe you would go first to see if higher dexterity than I do. <clears throat> um, I'm on top of um, Belianthic, so I'm using my short bow. Just picking ones out of the Got it. 24. Woo! 8. 6 damage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, 7. Yeah, 6 damage. Okay. Uh, you think one of the one of your shots goes right into the chest of one of them. You see it just... It, it's coming well, towards you, but... <sighs> Your, Are any of these sneak attacks since I'm <clears throat> up above them? I'd say uh, since they have not taken any turns in combat yet, uh, I would count that as having advantage on it. So yes, that would be sneak attack. You go ahead and roll roll another attack just in case it's a natural 20. Because, who boy. Roll another d20? Uh, no. You you still hit. It was just giving you the opportunity of advantage in case it was a natural 20. Okay. It's always good to double check. But yeah, throw that sneak attack on there. So five. So ten altogether. Ten all the, including the... Including the, the original four. roll. Uh, the it, not quite enough to take it all the way down, but nasty hit, and it seems like it's it's just kind of like trudging through uh, what should be solid ground. And to all of you that, well, any of you that are on the ground can feel it is solid, um, but for some reason it almost looks like these are trying to lift their legs up out of muck. They're just they're slower moving and just that was a good shot. Anything else for you doing? I'm just I'm on top of uh, Bell, so I'm not really I don't think I would do anything else besides ready myself for the next time around. Okay. You got it. All right, uh, 
Bonus action as we pursue for the first time ever, I'm going to pop up my spiritual weapon. Woo! Which is going to be a carbon copy of the Ammer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Ammer is half ball, half axe. <laughs> Uh, and then I am going to swing with my hammer at um, just whichever one is in front of me. The, the hammer prime? Yeah. Um, 14. 14 hits. Ooh, okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, that's going to be 17 slashing damage, swinging with the axe head. As you cleave right through one of them, you see the top, like, third of it just <laughs> flies off. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then when I cast Spiritual Weapon, I can also attack with it. So I'm going to attack another one with the Spiritual Weapon, which is... Uh, it's also going to be a 14 to hit. Yeah. And yep. it is going to do 1d8 plus spell casting ability modifier. Uh, it's going to be 12 damage. 12 damage. Got it. So the, the spiritual weapon hammer comes through and goes to mimic the same type of strike. And you see it just like puff through, and there's a bit of uh, just it gashes it right across the chest. Okay. Doesn't doesn't quite. The full, but its top portion is like hanging off, oh, like God. hinged a little bit. All right, didn't uh, cut all the way through, but almost. And uh, that'll be my turn. <laughs> Got it. That brings us to Meg or Zaith. Sorry, pardon me. Zaith, um, Zaith is going to cast uh, magic missile. At um, whoever's still up, there's three there's, still up. there's a bunch of them. Yeah, there's the Just, one that he hit, I guess. Then, or is that one down? I hit I, I hit two of them. One of them is down. One of them is not. All right, the one that's not down. And then sure. with that, I'm also gonna put uh, pump a life rune into it, and I'm gonna give uh, Belianthra temporary hit points, so she gets uh, 15 temporary hit points. Or no. Yes. Because I'm casting it at third level. Magic Missile. Okay. So. So that's... It's not, four? Uh, mm, yeah, it's four. Four darts. Three... Or three actually. plus five darts. Five darts, yeah. Second. So it's four darts. No, three... Five darts, you're right, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> And does that all have to be focused on one target? No, I'm just okay. Yep, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just peppering like, five that I see. Gonna, gonna... Yep, and then she's gonna get Belianthor will get fifteen um, temporary HP. Yeah. All right. My other D four. So what's one D four plus one? So, yeah. so one takes two damage. One takes three. One takes no four. One takes three. And then two more take three more points of damage. Uh, you see a, a spray of what look like uh, like wild bottle rockets shoot off of Zayth, just <laughs> and each one goes. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, the one that the spiritual weapon hammer hit uh, is enough to like that last little bit. You see the top half of it flop off to the ground. <laughs> Uh, some of the others kind of like hits him in the face or in the hip. Uh, seems to annoy the hell out of him. Uh, but they continue to like sludge towards you in yeah. the, the dirt. Anything else? Uh, just that uh, Billy Ombre gets yeah. Yeah, that. Cool. I'll be like, hopefully this is a little better because I'm on your back. Appreciate you. She's 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 all right. Yeah, I figured it's not. She could do be doing much. okay. <laughs> figured not much is going to hurt her. That's your turn. We're up to Germ. So we're just trying to the dynamics. Straight on we're forward, just, just, her. just uh, clearing a path. I'm going to unstopper the decanter of endless water, and okay. speak the command word geyser, 
Hmm. But rather than using it to target a specific one, can I just spray enough to just annoy them so they're just like, rather than trying to like knock a specific one down, can I just like spray them so they're just like, ah, ah, as we just kind of run past as they're just uh, being sprayed ahead. annoyingly with water? I'd say go for it. Make a. Make an arcana check using your dexterity modifier. Oh, okay. 18. Phenomenal. Uh, so as you're kind of like stuck yeah. on an angle off of Belianthra and she's she's overstepping these pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, so none of them are able to come up and actually get to you. So you're just spraying down everything in front like a like an angry fire hose. Yeah. Uh, Spider fire truck. Yeah. <laughs> and everything that's that's just in the path for how long does that last? Um, I mean, it's the, endless water, so I can just keep doing it forever. Uh, but, uh, Geyser had a... Geyser is 30 feet long. Uh, it's produced 30 gallons of water that gushes forth in a geyser 30 feet long and one foot wide. And then as okay. a bonus action, I can target things with it. Yeah, so you're as just... A... Yeah. Yeah, as, uh, let's see. Ooh. Better. What's your spell DC? Or, well, uh, this would be if uh, they yeah. if they want that it's a DC thirteen strength saving throw or take a D four bludgeoning damage and fall prone. But that's only if I target them. I was just yeah. Trying you're just to, you're just doing a, a, a to, blanket spray. So know, I'm just I'm just checking to see a general by. like yeah. Like how many how many actually get affected? Yeah, most most of them are are okay. A couple of them get uh, like caught like when you get real close, it hits one of them in the head and kind of knocks them off. Uh, just kind of like spraying people on bikes with a hose as they go by. Yeah. Like, it's not really going to hurt them, but it's going to be like... It's, it's it seems to uh, distract them yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, just going yeah. for the distract. Fantastic. And then maybe some of the townsfolk can just be able to like, stab them on their way by. Yeah, you know? while they're not looking. Yeah. Got it. No, they'll just give them advantages. Yeah, just very literally spray and pray. Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. that's me. That's it. Yes. All right. It brings us to Amrix. Um, are they like in a straight line, like, or they're they're pretty scattered around? But I'd say there's points where you could stand to get a few of them, you know, in a line. Would you say like a five by thirty foot? area like a 30 foot line yeah five i think it's it's five by 30 yeah because if we need to clear a path yeah uh i think i'm gonna use my lightning dragon breath absolutely and just yeah you can get it you can get a few just bolt it out go for it is that dexterity save uh yep yeah. uh 12 i'm not very dexy Nine. Uh, a Fourteen. And an eight. <laughs> Someone have another uh, D6. You said your DC is fifteen? Uh, Twelve. Twelve. So one of them succeeds. Uh, but it's only half damage on success. Yeah, well, damage is damage. But two of them fail. So... One's got, or er, so it's eleven. Eleven total. So, yep. so you send this this bolt of lightning out of your mouth. Um, they have been sprayed by the water. <laughs> it electrocutes them, and you can see the three of them just. <laughs> uh, the two that failed drop immediately. Uh, there's one still standing, but seems to have some like smoke emanating off of him a little bit. He's singed. Bam. Um, is is anybody close, like within five feet? Um, I'd say if anything, you'd 
you'd probably be like close behind Barrack or Varsk. Okay. Or close enough to get within five feet of them. Okay. Um. This is just all happening as you're running. So sometimes you're, you're, you're going and you like um, take that second or two to strike something and then keep going. Okay. So then um, it's like a side scroller. Just keep, okay. just keep moving. Then as we keep rolling, I uh, have my flaming sword. I'll, as we're running, I'll take a whack at the one that uh, I guess is smoking or yeah, uh, 22. Definitely hits. You slice through with the flaming sword. <laughs> and that it only does five points of damage. That is enough, though. Uh, the the flame engulfs the rest of it. It's now, uh, well, once smoldering body, now becomes a smoldering corpse. Next to the other two smoldering corpses. Awesome. Um, and then the only other reaction I have is uh, protection. Um, as long as anybody's within five feet, I can they can I can use my reaction to impose disadvantage on attack rolls. So that's all I got. Brings us back to the top of the round. Barsk. Barsk on all fours is snarling and charging the next one. Just, oh yeah. <laughs> See, uh, there's a couple of the other people from the town are uh, riding on the Catoblepis, uh, like as mounts. Just a few of them, uh, off on the, like the fringes, the edges of this path that you're clearing for them. Uh, the the running is very similar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> Uh, he's going to uh, jump at the next one, and you got it. Probably more for the kneecaps type of uh, area, okay? Because <laughs> he's not so tall. Going for the low hit. He's going for what he's good for. He's good yeah. at. <laughs> uh, that's probably not going to hit. Uh, it is a uh, eleven. Eleven's not hit. As you go to hit at the legs of this one. You realize that, like, it's just like the flesh for some reason. Almost that, like, did it step over you? You have no idea. Yeah, you know, I figured. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, then he'll go for a. Um, that's a fourteen. Fourteen hits. A twelve. Twelve does not hit. And an eighteen. 18 hits. Uh, he does 7 and another 10. So 17. 17. Uh, like a like an angry bull at the matador. You go through the, <laughs> the trailing flesh robe of one of them uh, and swing back to carve it up with your claws and then just tear it apart. <laughs> Anything else? That's it. That's it. Carrying on. Picus. Um, I'm going to uh, slide down the side of the spider. Okay. Um, like with... side of the body, or are you like sliding off the leg? I'm going to slide... Um, I'm going to use an, an arm to kind of slide down the leg okay. of the side with a dagger and a short sword in hand. Got it. And I'm going to run alongside the spider. All right. So you're now, for my, you're now on the ground. I'm on the ground. And you're running. And for whoever is right there, mm-hmm. I'm going to swing my... Short sword. You got it. Go ahead and make that attack. Um, it's a because, because there, there's a kind of 
perpetual spray of water that's been going on. Um, it is distracted enough you get advantage on that uh, attack. Go for the crit. Yeah. Roll twice, take the higher. Alright, so 26. Hell yeah. 24. Plus the modifiers and everything? Yeah. 24. Uh, like a like a shadow in the middle of the daytime. You, you slide down and before you even make contact with the ground, the short sword just cleaves right through as you're like backhand holding it. So it's sticking out like this and you just drive it through the body of one of them that is soaking wet and is just peels it in half. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is there anything else? Yeah, once I hit the ground, <laughs> I'm going to take my dagger and throw it at the one directly in front of me. So go ahead and make that attack. Nineteen. Hits. Four. D four. It is. It oh, is you got D4. the weird one. It's a funny shaped one. Hell yeah, oh, I like this. Um, sweet. Yeah, you see the uh, as you do a quick throw of your dagger, uh, it it catches it like through the cheek. It's just. <laughs> Beric, uh, I am going to yet again swing with the hammer on the closest one to me. Uh, that's going to be a 24 to hit. Woo! Uh, that's going to be a D10. How did I just add it? Thank you. Um, that's 15 slashing damage. Um, swing across from shoulder to hip. Just, yep. Um, I'm going to move my spiritual weapon to the next to the next one. It is also going to make an attack against that one. Okay. Uh, and that is also going to be a 24 to hit. And that's going to be... Eleven slashing damage. Okay. To a separate one, not the second yeah, one. Yeah, this is the se- this is the the second. Yeah, I'm yeah. assuming the first one that was first one's gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so then that's going to be yeah, eleven damage to the next one. Okay. And then if that doesn't kill it, I am going to rush it and goring rush. Got it. Oh yeah, plus the force damage because I have the things that Zayth made me. Oh yeah. As, you, as the they don't glint. There's not enough direct sunlight right now. It's, it's very overcast. Uh, and damp. Oh, it just allows me to make a melee attack with my horns. Okay, cool. Um, so, each one. Oh, and I roll a nat one. Uh, Unfortunate. I slip in the water. Yeah, just a little... <laughs> the, the salt flats have turned into a little bit muddier terrain than you were expecting and you you biff it hard. It's just like what happened at Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> What's this Burning Man you speak of? <laughs> Alright, well, that's uh, I believe that's all you got then, Beric? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm currently <laughs> laying in the mud. <laughs> And spend a little, just a brief moment picking yourself and your pride up out of the mud. Brings us to Zaith. All the right. Germ. I am going to um, cast Icing Death's Frost. So a 30 foot cone in front of me. They have to make a con save. So, whatever, how many I can get in a 30 foot cone. That's who I attack. Let's see. 30 foot cone. Cone. 
Probably not directly in front of the giant spider, but... Uh, you get three of them. All right. And then they have to make a con save. Con save. DC... 15. That's a five. It's a three. And a nine. All right. Uh, so they are trapped in ice, and they cannot move. Yep. And then they take 3d8 damage. Uh, which I rolled poorly. Give, give an extra d8 on there because they are wet. Oh, okay. And you're hitting them with some cold damage and be extra frosty. Uh, they take nine points of damage. All right. And and are frozen. Yeah, they're frozen. So you, see, you see some of them just like... <laughs> and... The speed's reduced to zero and they... They're covering ice for a minute. Ooh. All right. Uh, any attacks against those uh, are going to be an advantage. <laughs> They're not moving. And with that, we move to Jerem and then Emrix. What's the path looking like forward? Like, is it still... the, path's, the path's looking pretty clear at this at this point. Or there, there seems to be... A stretch, at least, where uh, there there aren't more of these things. Okay, so we're, we're outpacing them. Yeah. Okay. They, they're they're not moving very fast, and you're definitely clearing enough of them that it's not drawing some of the, the ones from farther away. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll keep it up with the you know spraying the water, clear a path. It seems to be helpful. For, it's it's working. Yep. Anything else? No, that's. I'll keep okay. using my my action for that. You got it. Amrix, uh, yep. we're gonna take. So, are the ones that are frozen still on my path? Yeah. Okay. So this we'll... is this is all like you're all moving kind of in a group, uh, and we'll say that initiative order is kind of like. How far, like uh, how the marching marching order? Okay. Um, so you're you're able to like bring up the tail end. You see Z just blast these with the cold, okay. and go. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I, I'm gonna come through and try to. That is a 19. On one of them. Very yeah. Good. Two. Um. Uh. <laughs> A natural 20. Woo! Uh, so that's a 27. Um, on the other attack. Jesus. So. D8. Oops, sorry, wrong D8. Got a rogue dice. Um, and that is 9. Oh, that's 9 for the uh, normal one. Okay. And then for the nat 20, what do I do there? Uh, it's. You double the dice. dice. Okay. And then add your modifiers on top of that. Okay. Um, and that's only 14. 14. Uh, the, the first one you hit, uh, because it is frozen and not moving, <laughs> uh, the first one cuts through. Uh, it looks like you just take the head clean off. The second one, you put your full shoulder and everything into and just plow right through it uh, as the sword just like guides a little bit of pressure just to break it and shatter the ice out in front of you. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. And then we just keep on rolling. That's all I got. Uh, with, with that um, you know, the, the rest of the Townsfolk behind you are able to pick off any of the little straggler bits uh, that that are left behind or previously damaged, and you're able to get to an area where it clears out. You can hear a little bit more of just the the calm winds across the, the plains here, uh, or the salt flats. Is that all of us? All of you. Um, I needed to grab my dagger. To finish, okay. off, finish off that one guy by it's yeah. easy enough to do. All right. You're kind of like, oh wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
I think that's a, a good place to close the book on the story for tonight. So we will pick up next episode with the rest of uh, traveling across the expanse of wastes, getting to salt steps and preparing for the final battle. So to our players, Logan, Kate, Justin, Evan, Meg, and Jeremy, thank you so much for playing. Uh, to those of you watching, thank you for watching. Uh, remember to pick up your Spartalheim candle uh, to conjure the realm during our next premiere or get ahead of the game with the Salt Steps Body Scrub or Body Butter. Uh, if you like this adventure, do the whole like, share, and subscribe thing. It really helps us out and we appreciate it. And it'll help keep you up to date on all of the magic in our world. So we will see you next time in the realm.